Hi guys, so I recently talked about an opinion piece that appeared in the Irish Times newspaper written by both the Northern Ireland Secretary of State Brandon Lewis and the Brexit Minister Lord Frost. They had made comments about how the EU shouldn't be asking for the UK to simply implement the Northern Ireland Protocol, but that there needed to be flexibility and pragmatism. In the article, they praised the Irish government and thinly condemned the European Union. Well, there seems to have been a bit of pushback from the Irish government, however, that was generally restrained. That wasn't the case with the current EU ambassador to Washington, John Bruton, who is also a former Taoiseach. He described the article as remarkable and suggested that perhaps the two men had never actually read the Northern Ireland Protocol. He again reinforced the point that both the Irish government and the European Union have made on numerous occasions, that Boris Johnson's government negotiated and agreed the withdrawal agreement which contains the protocol. It has been something that the UK agreed in law to respect and to carry out. He pointed to Annex 2 which contains a list of EU laws that the UK agreed to apply, also the lengthy list of customs codes used by the European Union. This list of codes contains clearly defined procedures that need to be carried out, and the UK knows this. The reason they do is that this isn't something new. When the UK was a member of the EU, it helped draft each of these rules. He also said that, ironically, the UK, when it was a member, applied these laws in a stricter way than many other states. The list of rules the UK must follow include the collection of data on trade, product safety, electrical equipment, medical products, food safety, GMOs and diseases affecting animals. Each rule is linked to the respective EU legislation. Mr. Abruton went on to explain how, if the UK agreed to carry out these checks, then they had to be carried out somewhere. The border had to be on the land or on the sea. But if Boris Johnson's government wanted, as they had said on many occasions, to avoid a land border, then the sea was the only other option. The former Taoiseach suggested that neither the Brexit Minister or the Northern Ireland Secretary of State could provide a constructive solution to where the checks were to be carried out but only slogans of balance and flexibility in regards to the implementation of the rules that they agreed to. He raised the problem of leakage into the Republic of Ireland also, where goods that are not checked in Northern Ireland and find themselves in the South, well, this could result in member states of the European Union demanding more checks to be carried out, perhaps even in the Republic. The British government has refused to acknowledge such a problem. He also talked about something that has been raised by others. If the UK is planning on diverging from EU standards, and Boris Johnson's main reason for Brexit was divergence, then checks need to be rigorously enforced. Mr. Bruton attacked the rhetoric used by both men as menacing, when they suggested that if they didn't receive a positive message from the EU, they would consider all their options. The former Taoiseach condemned the article for a lack of any hint of either men taking responsibility for the protocol they negotiated and signed. It's an international legal contract, remember. While the European Union has granted a three-month grace period extension, Mr. Bruton suggested that neither man planned to use that extension as intended, that being to allow businesses in Northern Ireland to make adjustments to their supply chains. Instead, he believes they will use this extra three months to whip up more anti-European feeling, especially in Northern Ireland, with the goal of forcing the EU to water down the foundations of the single market, or to keep Brexiteers in Britain happy. Finally, Mr. Bruton had a warning for the European Union. He believes that the UK is pushing for the EU to recognise UK standards, which will no doubt be lower as equivalent to EU standards. He believes this would be a slippery slope, eventually rendering the single market obsolete. I don't know if I fully agree with the former Taoiseach here. He seems to think that the UK's request for extensions is an attempt to get the EU to lower its standards via threats to peace in Northern Ireland. I think Boris Johnson's government have a different goal in mind. I think they want to see businesses in Northern Ireland adapt to new supply chains. If we remember how, just after the end of the Brexit transition period, GB-based companies were told by the Department of International Trade that they couldn't be helped, but were told how to get round the post-Brexit red tape by simply setting up in the European Union. This demonstrated to me that the Tory government's approach is 
you're on your own, we don't care about you. I see a similar approach in Northern Ireland. If trade between Great Britain and Northern Ireland dries up because it's been handled via the EU or the Republic of Ireland, then there's little need for checks. And this could be achieved by simply kicking the can down the road every three months. Now I could be wrong here, but it does seem more in line with post-Brexit Tory thinking. Let me know in the comments section guys what you think. As always, your comments are greatly appreciated. Thanks a lot. I want to say a big, big thank you to all of my patrons. You ensure that this channel continues to exist. I'm eternally grateful for all of your support. If you join Patreon, you will receive instant access to our Discord server, where we have both audio and video chats. You can chat with me and other patrons, where we discuss important and non-important issues. Becoming a patron per month costs about the same as a large coffee. So why not check it out?